You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. Uh, she doesn't exactly agree with the way I promote myself online. He'll tell me that he's going to do these photo shoots. These girls will be like literally basically naked and like touching on his chest. Their legs will be hanging over his leg. But if he's not texting me back, I'm worried. Maybe he's trying to hide the fact that he has a wife. Why aren't you texting her back? Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, for the first time on Divorce Court, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Zibia from Cooperton, California. Zibia, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Long versus Futrell. Thank you, Juan. Mr. Travis Long. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your wife, Miss Ashley Futrell. Yes, Your Honor. To court today. The two of you have been together for 12 years. Yes, Your Honor. Long time, but now you're having some issues that you want to resolve and discuss here in court. Yes. And you also have a witness with you, sir, Mr. Stephen Archie. Yes, Thank Your Honor. Thank you for being here. I'll call on you shortly when it's time for you to testify. But let's start with you, Mr. Long. Why don't you give me some background on your relationship and how the two of you have ended up here? Um, yes, Your Honor. Uh, I met Ashley about 12 years ago, kind of our high school sweethearts. Um, we've been living together basically that entire time, right? When I turned 17, I moved out of my house, lived with her. And um, martial arts is kind of what we both do. It's what's keeping us together. I love my wife, but there's definitely some issues that we need to take care of. And what do you say the issues are? Um, well, I brought my wife to divorce court today because she embarrasses me in front of my friends. Mm -hmm. She cares about me a lot, and I get that, but sometimes it goes a little overboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want her to stop fighting mm -hmm. so I can pursue my career in fighting. It's kind of hard to juggle both of those at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she doesn't exactly agree with the way I promote myself online. Okay, so those are your issues that you've presented. What do you have to say about that, Miss Futrell? You know, I came here today because I'm really sick of these photo shoots that he's doing with these women. Most of the time, they're almost nude. Mm. And I don't get told about that, so it's really bothersome. And on top of that, he wants me to quit fighting, which I've invested most of my life into. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just not fair. And I, and, I, and I think it's uncalled for for him to ask me to quit. Mm. You say the bigger issue around what's been going on between the two of you is the brand that he's trying to create. Who wants to talk about that? So, Your Honor, he'll tell me that he's going to do these photo shoots, okay? And he won't tell me all the details of it. So these photos will come back to me. They'll get sent to me through my messages and whatnot, and I'll see them randomly online. And these girls are, like, basically nude. They're in these little tiny thong bikinis. There was one picture that this girl was actually on a pole in the limo, and the other ones were on him. They'll be laying all over him. They'll be touchy-feely. And, like, he didn't tell me about it. So to me, I feel like that's super suspect and it makes me feel like he's cheating on me. Why is he in a limo? What's that about? He'll rent the limo for the, like, for a photo shoot. And so I submitted evidence of it too mm -hmm. because there's, there's tons of photos that'll come back. These girls will be like literally basically naked and like touching on his chest. Their legs will be hanging over his legs. First of all, I made the mistake of hiring a small limo and too many girls. So in the pictures, it looks a little crazy. Like there's not a lot of room for the girls. So the girls are literally like laying all over me. All you what see were is, you like, doing? What was that about? It, just a promotion thing, you know, look at me. I'm Promoting cool. what? Uh, you know, uh, your career as a martial artist. You know, sometimes being a fighter just isn't enough. You have to have uh, a personality, a character. Okay. So my character is, you know, like the limo riding, jet flying girl beside me kind of guy. And my fans get into that. You've I mean, built up a fan base. Yes, yes, I built a fan base. So what do your fans say when they see you in the limo with the girls? Um, they like it. Sometimes they're like, where's your wife? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> uh, but a lot, most of them are just like, you know, that's cool. That, you know, that's gangster. That's, that's, you know, that's awesome. But, um, so you like the character. attention that it's getting you? Yes. You think that's it's a part of the brand? It's clout. It's clout, it's attention, it's um, promotion, and I promise on anything, as soon as the camera is off, I'm telling those girls, all right, get off of me. You know, like, I'm not, I'm, this is strictly just business. Okay, so in your mind, it's enhancing your career, getting you more attention, and it's going to get you more buzz around your fights. Absolutely. And it's working. 
So both of you do mixed martial arts. Yes. People call that MMA. Yes, Your Honor. What are we seeing here? Uh, this is me training her for her MMA debut. So uh, we're in a gym, basically just working on blocking shots, and we train with each other, and we mm -hmm. work with each other, and we help each other's career. But at this time, I'm focused on her career only. Mm -hmm. How did the two of you get started doing this? Um, you know, I started out as a fan of mixed martial arts, and I just wanted to get into it. And I've always been a super fan, and one day I kind of asked her. She's always been tough. She's always been stern, a little mean side to her. Mm -hmm. And I asked her one day, I was like, you know, you ever feel like, uh, you know, trying this out, you know? And she went to the library one day, she researched all of it, and she came back, she was like, you know what, these girls are around my size, uh, you know, I, I, I'm strong, so I think I can do this. So you recruited her? <laughs> Basically, yeah. And now yeah. you want her to stop? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what so. is the reason? Because that's a big point um, of contention between the two of you. Well, there's plenty of reasons, but, um, you know, uh, most, most of the reason is, selfishly, I want to fight. <laughs> So when she's doing her career, I tend to, to lay back and let her do her thing. I want to talk about that more as we get into the case. But you said something initially. You said that she embarrasses you. Right, In absolutely. front of your friends. Absolutely. What do you mean by that? Oh, man. So I'm at the gym sometimes, and I'm sparring in a cage with my coach, other fighters, MMA fighters. We're tough men. We're tough guys. And... I'll go to, you know, get a, get a water bottle out my bag mm -hmm. and I'll pull out can like, can like snacks for kids, you know, because she's a mom too, so I'll get like baby snacks and like juices and gummies and... That doesn't sound so mean to me. You said she was I mean. I mean, it doesn't sound mean, but when you're in a room full of fighters that make fun of you if that stuff happens to fall out of your bag or if they happen to go in your bag for some reason or, mm -hmm. you know, we just got done punching each other in the face and then, you know, I, I pull out like a, a, a snacky for kids, you know, like... But I would bet a lot of those guys probably wish they had those snacks. Maybe it's a bit of jealousy, <laughs> but it's embarrassing. It all started with a jiu-jitsu tournament that we first had, and literally within an hour after weigh-ins, um, Mr. Chubb was blowing up my phone, calling me. Your phone? M my phone. You know that he's with Coach Archie, right? If he's not texting me back, now I'm suspect that he's cheating. Who is your witness that you have here with you today? Uh, my witness is uh, my main coach, Steven. Oh, he's a coach? Yes. Okay, Coach Archie, step up to the lectern, sir. How you doing? Coach, you have an injury to your finger? Uh, yeah, some tra training injury. Some tra training injury? Part of the game, you want to be a fighter, it comes with the territory. Okay. How long have you been a, a coach, Mr. Archie? Um, going on 12 years now. Um, pretty much since I started in the game, I jumped full force nine hours a day. Been doing it six days a week ever mm. since. And have, were you a mixed martial artist yourself? I got about five fights in before I decided that coaching was more my aspect. Did you win all of them? No. No, okay. we don't win them all. Sometimes that makes better teachers, though, right? When yes. you lose? Yes. Because you, know you know what you did wrong and you can lead from experience. Definitely. Most definitely. What are you a witness to today? Why did, he, why did Mr. Long ask you to come to court on his behalf? Um, I, ba I guess basically um, the, what I call the pop-ups and the blow-ups. The first jiu-jitsu tournament I took him to, I kind of explained the whole day on how we were going to, you know, uh, we were at the tournament all day, and then we're going to, you know, with the fighters, we go eat, we go hang out afterwards. It's like this whole little kind of ritual that we do. And literally within an hour after weigh-ins, um, Mr. Chell was blowing up my phone, calling me. Your phone? M my phone, mm. trying to figure out what was going on. I explained to her, you know, you can watch it live on, on Facebook. It's, you know, what exactly what's going on. I told her how it was going. What Every, was the issue she said she was calling you about? She was just trying to get a hold. She didn't know what we were doing. She was just trying to figure out what was going on. And I'm like, you can follow what's going on. There's live feed. I'm here. You know, I'm trying to coach my guy. I'm competing also. So there's a lot going on. I don't really have time to keep messing with the phone. It shouldn't be that big of an issue. It's a fight. You know, that's what we do. So to be fair, my fans are constantly sending me these sexy pictures that I'm not told about. So it makes me suspect that he's cheating. And all I'm asking is please text me and let me know you get there. Like he told me he's going to the tournament. I know he's doing it. You know that he's with Coach Archie, right? But if he's not texting me back mm -hmm. and not letting me know, hey, I made it here safe. Now I'm worried because I'm, I'm worried that maybe the, the somebody that was driving wasn't good enough. Or, or maybe he's with a girl and he's trying to hide the fact that he has a wife. And, and so I'm, I'm just, 
I'm suspect of the whole situation. Why aren't, same, you, why aren't you texting her back? You know, to be honest, sometimes I see it and it just gets annoying. <laughs> oh, so you're ignoring it, her um, on purpose. A little bit, yeah. Like, I'll be, in, I'll be on road trips with people mm -hmm. and she'll call my friends before even texting me mm -hmm. to make sure that they're driving safe. <laughs> she really goes overboard, like mm -hmm. it's so overprotective of me. And as a man and as a fighter, it hurts my pride. So when you got the juice box, you knew. Right. It was going to be all downhill from there. Right. Well, to be Same. fair, in the past, Your Honor, he was driving with somebody else. And it, was, it was a long time ago, but she, the person had got him in a serious crash. Really? So when he doesn't text me back, now I'm just worried that he got in another crash. Mr. Archie, let me ask you, because you are a recipient of some of these phone calls, what's your impression? Was she that concerned about where you were, or well, were there, really was there doubt in her mind about what he was doing? There was one time, like, well, we're at the gym. It's a typical day at the gym. We're training. And she just busted in the door and is like, I need to talk to you now. She was saying it that is, to you? She was saying it to him, but she was making such a scene mm -hmm. that being that I'm the one in charge, I have to kind of, all right, this right. is what's going on. We, we can't do this in my place of business. I have a reputation mm -hmm. to uphold. I have kids. Do you know what she was making a scene about? I have no idea what it was. I can only look at it as, look, you're in, you're in, in my place of business. Mm -hmm. you, this has to be some. I have to take you guys separate. You'll have to talk about this, mm -hmm. handle these kind of business. And, and it's not the only time. That's just like... The first one. That's the first time that... How many times have you witnessed this? Uh, I would say three or four or five. I can think of a couple right off the bat. Um, there was one time where I'm having, doing a training day with him, taking him to different gyms and training, and she just pops up. Was this again after... This is all you after... Weren't the, you weren't responding to text messages when she I, reached out to you? I will admit that I rarely respond to texts when I'm out of the house. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I don't want to be on my phone 24-7 like I'm busy training. It just I'm seems busy. like if you just texted her back, maybe some of this could be avoided. <laughs> Thank you. You can have Thank seat. you very much. Well, you used to box professionally. I did. It's, it's a very selfish sport, but it's not a selfless sport because your family is there with you. There's nothing in this world that's going to compare to your health because then how are you going to be able to enjoy that time with your family down the road? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. You want her to stop fighting. Yes. And you said it's selfish because you want her to stop so you can start again. Yes, Your Honor. Why is that? She's had a couple fights under her. She's won her gold medals. She's, you know, been in a couple tournaments. I've only had two tournaments myself. Uh, I just feel like, selfishly, it's, it's my time to fight. Is this you, Miss Futrail? Yes. Of course. I wouldn't expect you to submit any other photos. Yeah, she's great at what she does. Yes, that's she's, great. she's great at what she does. But it's hard to focus on two careers at the same time. Like, when I'm, when she's fighting, I have to stay home and I have to babysit with the kids. I have to, you know... So, so you're saying the two of you can no longer, because of the children and family obligations, both train and be MMA fighters at the same time? It's nearly impossible. You agree with that, Ms. Futrell? I don't. I feel like we could work it out somehow. I, I understand that you do need to be selfish in this sport in order to be successful to an extent. But I feel like there should be some kind of a way that we can work it out to where I can train too. I don't feel like I should have to quit. After everything. Why does she through. have to quit? Why is she the one that needs to quit? I hate seeing my wife hurt. And that is one of the biggest things. Like, worrying as if she's going to win for this eight to ten months that she's training for this fight. I'm, our whole family depends on, like, that stress of, oh, man, I hope mommy wins. You know, I hope she wins. And I, I can't go in there and fight for her. Mm -hmm. Me, I can go in there and fight. Like, if she doesn't want to fight, like, if she just relaxes and let me do it, let me go in the case. Let me take the punches in the face. She's a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Why, why do that? Like, I've seen her get knocked out before. He was there. It is not good for me. I, what if she feels the same way about you? I just want to be the tough guy of the family. I want to be the leader of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up without a father. I want to be the best one that I can be. Mm -hmm. Well, and you used to box professionally. Yes, ma'am. And you, you retired from boxing? I did. What was the reason that... You, because at some point, people quit. They decide to move on and do something else. Was there a particular reason for you? Absolutely. You ever ask a fighter... When are they going to quit? Their answer is always going to be the same. I'm going to quit until I can't fight anymore. Well, you don't want it to get to that, all right? Because you have a family. You guys hit a lot of points. I don't want to see her hurt. 
I don't want to do this. You know, there's a lot that, you know, it takes away time from the family. And that was the major reason why I quit. It's, it's a very selfish sport, but it's not a selfless sport because your family is there with you. Your family is the one that feels every punch that gets thrown. You said it yourself, when you see her getting punched, you feel the punches. And I guarantee you, there's no bigger pain than any puncher or any kick's gonna give you than seeing your significant other on the corner ringside crying uh -huh. because they feel your pain. I guarantee that. So that was my decision that I had to make. So there's no accolade, there's no belt, there's no records, there's nothing in this world that's gonna compare to your health because then how are you gonna be able to enjoy that time with your family down the road? And that's what you really have to think about is that you have a family. And that was my decision mm -hmm. when I left the sport of boxing. And that was your decision Absolutely. that you made yourself, right? Yes, ma'am. I understand everything you said, Juan, and I, I thank you for being transparent about that, but mm -hmm. that is a decision that you made for yourself, and that's a decision that she has to make for herself. <laughs>